This is going to be a finish of the painting that I started as a demonstration on the Daniel Smith Artist Materials Live uh, venue and you can see that on their uh, Facebook site if you want to see the first part of this. But I started with another version of the same painting. And so on this one, I have the bird and the flowers masked and I did uh, kind of the first coat on the background and it needed, it needs uh, actually uh, some darker value in parts of it. And uh, so for this one, if I ever finish this one, I will, um, add some more to the background and I haven't obviously removed the mask so that's why it's got that creamy color on there and then this is my color study where I was trying different background colors and um, I didn't mention this during the class but uh, this is Arches 90 pound watercolor paper and my Epson printer is uh, has waterproof ink it's the DuraBright ink series that Epson does I don't know if it's um, still something that is in their current printers because it's an older printer. Um, but uh, when I print it out, I can then just paint uh, right on top of those and I don't have to redraw each one to try different things in the background. And I still have my main subject on these. So this is the one I ended up choosing. And uh, if you want to see the beginning, as I said, for the background and some of the things that happened on the bird, uh, you can go to the Daniel Smith uh, Live, uh, Daniel Smith Artist Materials uh, Facebook uh, page and look for my live. And uh, or, or you can go on their website and uh, I think they have a link there somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. Um, so I got this far in the uh, demo and so I'm going to finish it up. And I just thought I would use it as a video for my YouTube channel as well. And so I'm going to zoom in for the bird. I'll move this up just a little bit. And this is a dark chinned hummingbird and he was photographed in my backyard and I uh, got some of those first layers on gives me an idea of sort of where I'm going and I may not talk the whole time uh, I'm doing this demo so I may speed parts of it up but uh, I do have some more to do before the bird itself is done. And I did go in and uh, I lifted a little bit on this upper edge. So I just took my um, flat brush, got some water on it and just lifted some highlights because on the image, this is more lit here. And I wanted to make sure that that side of the head is standing out from the background. I may still go in and, and lift a little bit along this edge. For now, I'm going to leave it. And then I did lift a little bit here, but I may put some color back on. And then I softened and lifted just a touch on this edge as well. So that might look a little different in the, in the video. Um, the, one of the first things I'm going to do is I mentioned during the demo that when you do a I, do an I, not a I, um, you can go in. So I do have this highlight sitting there, but you can go in with a secondary highlight. So I'm just going to lift a little bit of that dark color right there. I need to do a little more, so I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to lighten this just a touch more. Oops. Okay. And I need to get the pigment wet so this is thalo blue turquoise or thalo uh, turquoise green shade with permanent alizarin crimson to make my make my dark which is an almost black and now i've got a secondary highlight right there so i've got this one and i'm going to actually take my small round brush and just soften that edge just a little make it a tiny bit smaller so it's not as strong and now that i um, has a little life to it because it's got that secondary highlight and I do have a few things around this side of the face. This feels too straight to me. It needs to have um, a little bit of that edge adjusted and so 
one of the things I will do is just wake up that side and see if I can lift back. And I am using my round brush because it has a good point and I'm not trying to move a lot of the color, but I do want to move some and just make that work better right there. Okay, and then maybe just a little along a couple places here. So sometimes just softening the edge a little bit here and there can make it feel more correct or less um, stiff maybe, just having a little bit of a blurry edge here and there. And I think I also want to come back with a little bit more color. And there's just a touch of color right down in here. And there's some right along the top where his brow is that need to have just a touch of just a few lines here will make give me enough detail that uh, it makes that eye feel a little more realistic so that is my what I'm looking for I just need the right values and um, sometimes shapes around an area to make it feel correct and there is some darker green and when I was doing the demo it's a quick demo so it's maybe 30-40 minutes that you're actually demonstrating and when you're working fast like that sometimes you don't have the normal amount of time that I might use to think about the process and what I'm placing where so now that I can go back and just take my time and look at parts, I see things that I want to adjust. So right now I'm just coming back in here and adding a few more little marks. Okay. And then I do want to come in with my Quinn Sienna. And right in here, Quinn Sienna is a vibrant um, kind of version of burnt sienna. It's more on the orange side of the sienna, the burnt sienna. It's, uh, well, I guess I could show you if you don't have Quinn Sienna. This is Quinn Sienna. So it's definitely a kind of muted orange brown, and then this would be burnt sienna. Whoops. So this is uh, more neutral and has more, um, it looks browner than the Quinciana. But I treat my Quinciana both kind of as a muted orange and um, I leave it in my, the brown side of my palette. So it can serve multi-purposes. Okay, so I'm going in with this in between some of these greens because along the top of the head on this side, some of these feathers have a more vibrant kind of orange brown feel to them over here. They're not catching as much light and so I want some of that rustier brown look to some parts of this. So just work this in a little bit and then uh, my shadow area just so that I have uh, some of these feathers so I can see some of the shape of the feathers a little more I am going back in and just gently waking up the pigment and pulling out some highlights. So I'm not trying to get rid of the um, 
overall feel of the shadow, but I want to just define some of the shapes of these feathers a little. So if I were painting this not as a starting as a demo, some of these things um, I might just work up a little slower and I might still be doing it the same direction where I come back and lift some color off, um, but it also might just be something where I uh, paint a little slower and possibly the process might be a touch different. It is very interesting to try to go fast though. Okay, um, so I do know that I want to come in with a little bit of a olive green. So this is uh, Quin Gold and my uh, Ultramarine Turquoise. And I'm warming up a few of these feathers on this side. And I want to do the same over here. Some of those areas that I pulled the color back off of a little bit, um, I'm warming up as well with this mix. Okay, and then I'm going to bring some of that down through parts of this. And I don't know if that's going to show up for the camera or not. It may may not show up a lot, but I do see a difference here in front of me. And I am thinking about kind of the shapes of the feathers as I'm working with the layers that I'm putting on. So um, I'm always considering the, the shapes as I'm working through this. Now, and it really can depend for me when I'm doing um, a painting when I put the shadow on. So as I mentioned during the demo, um, I put that shadow in maybe earlier than I might normally, um, just so that I could have a darker value so that everyone could kind of see where I was going with the painting. And, um, it can help though, by putting it in earlier. This is uh, cobalt. I want a little more cobalt in the mix and some lilac, Quinn lilac, and a touch of my um, Quinbert Scarlet to mute it. And these feathers on the neck are in shadow right here. So I wanted to make that shadow a little stronger on the edge. Right here where it's very highlighted, I see just a touch of warm on the edges. So I'm putting some water in here and a little bit of Quinn Burnt Scarlet. Let's need to let it dry a second. Okay, it's losing the shine just a touch. Well, so I went back and picked up some more of the Quinn Burnt Scarlet. Basically, I'm just trying to get the edge to have a little glow to it. If I can get that, there we go, get the paint to release. So I want it to feel like the sunlight is really hitting right there and it's making the, that uh, highlight on the side of the bird's neck. And that little um, warm edge will make it feel like it's really glowing from the sunlight. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I'm using my Quincyna on this side. Get a touch more on my brush. And I'll just go along these shapes. Get some Quincyna in here. Along this shoulder too. There's a nice little warm patch there. And 
then I will use that in between some of these greens. And as I mentioned during the live demo, um, some of these first layers, even if I have to come back and darken them later, gives me an idea of where I want to put all those shapes and what's happening on the bird. Okay. I'm going to switch. Oh, actually I want, so I picked up um, Quinbert Scarlet and some of the Endon Throne. So my kind of darker muted brown and I'm going to go over and then pick up a little bit of that ultramarine turquoise because some of the shapes right in here on the pattern on the bird's throat are greenish but they're muted so I wanted some of that uh, Quinbert Scarlet and Indon Throne in my mix that I'm now using I'm just adjusting this edge. Okay, so there are a few darker shapes where there's smaller feathers on this edge and I want to just add a little bit of that now while I'm zoomed in and then I'll zoom out and move on. Just checking to see if I've got the things I want. I, I think I'm going to add, whoops, not Quinn Sienna, Quinn, or not Quinn Sienna, not Burnt Sienna, I want Quinn Sienna. I'm going to add just a touch more color in here and maybe a little in between some of these guys. Um, the feathers on top of the head, those green feathers right here, they are just a little bit too dark. And I'm going to take some water and my flat and just kind of wake up the pigment a touch. So I want, I am going sort of in the shape that those feathers are as well. I'm not trying to be too random removing or lifting. I'm going to go with the shape of the feather. And uh, I want to pull some of this back because I want it to feel like the top of the head is really glowing from the sunlight. All right, and then while I'm still zoomed in, I will go up there and put the side of the beak in. And I started the beak during the demo, and then because it was wet on that upper edge, I didn't put the side on. And this is the same mix, so phthalo blue, green shade with permanent alizarin crimson. And then at the very center of the top of the beak, right up in here, there's just a little bit of a darker area. So I need to come in with a touch more color though. And up here where the beak goes into the back of the flower. So in this instance, these are salvia flowers and the hummingbird is actually putting his beak through the back edge of the flower to get to the nectar without having to hover in front of the flower. And I saw them do this same kind of thing 
with some uh, zinnias and uh, my dahlias. So they figure out sometimes the easiest way to get to the nectar. And being able to perch on the branch of the flower and then get to the nectar from the backside is very handy for them. Okay, and I wonder, I think I want to take off there's a little bit of a dark value from the background right here, and I think I'm going to lift that back if I can. All right. Um, this feels just a touch dark right here. And I think I want to add just a little more shadow. And I'll leave that piece. Okay, I will zoom out. And now the light along the top of the bird's head and along the neck, a little bit on the shoulder, and just those little highlights around the eye and on the this side um, are really helping to make that hummingbird um, kind of glow against that darker background. And um, so I'm going to move down. I think I'll start in here. And this has that mix of the Quinn Burnt Sienna, no, nope, Quinn Burnt Scarlet. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and get some fresh color. And same thing for the green gold. Give me these guys. Okay, some green gold. And uh, I will probably build these kind of slowly, these feathers. So I have the Quinbert Scarlet, a touch of my green gold. And uh, they are, they look like they're a little darker on the left side of each of these. And then that color fades to the right. So once I put my color on, I'm going to come up with just a little water right next to that paint so that it has somewhere to fade to. So it can fade into um, to the right. So I did just come back with a touch of Indian Throne in my Quinbert Scarlet. And a little more green gold. Okay, and then I will fade it to the right. And this should be in the ultramarine turquoise color mix. I'll go ahead and put that in. And I kind of feel like I have enough of the first layer. So right now I'm just coming in with the darker value. So I'm not, I didn't add any green gold to this. I just wanted a little more of a neutral mix. So it's the End and Throne and Quinn Burnt Scarlet. So I'm just trying to define some of those feathers and give it a little bit of texture without maybe having to exactly figure out where every feather is. So it's more about just a little bit of some pattern and texture in there and value change. Okay, so that um, area right there I'm happy with. I do want some green gold in here, just a touch. And then I think I'm actually going to lift 
because that um, part right here on the wings is very highlighted. It almost looks white. It's so pale. Uh, so I think I'll leave that, let it dry, and then I can come back to that. And on the demo, I did this area of the wing as just kind of one pass of color as my first layer. And now I'm going to come back and start dividing it a little bit into feathers, finding those shapes. And I don't need it to be a lot darker. so. Some of this is just going to be a few marks here and there. Now I'm going to come in with a little, I think I'm going to try the green gold with the ultramarine turquoise. Just in a couple of places here, make this stand out a touch more. Maybe just plain green gold. It's always um, interesting to try to give the look of a feather that could be um, shiny. And some of that is for these feathers, because they're close in value, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'd have to really think about my process possibly a little more because I haven't actually painted this um, hummingbird before. This is the first time for me to paint the dark end. Um, and so it's kind of figuring out my colors and my process. And then depending on the light, sometimes you don't get the same look for the bird's uh, wings or the um, the light can make it look different, so. Right. Now, when I was doing the demo, I had my, I think it was my 16 brush in my hand, and I was using it in this area to, um, do these shapes and I kept going with it just because I already had it in my hand and it was um, had paint on it but in uh, in reality it probably would have just been easier if I had switched and used a smaller brush sometimes it's just fun to see if you can do it um, so I was using my number 20 brush to go around these little light lines but I do try to use my big brush as much as I can until it just gets too hard to get in the shapes. And the reason for that is because it holds a lot of pigment and water, so I can keep going for quite a while and not have to refill my brush, but also can keep me from getting too um, detailed too quickly now on this painting, I kind of had to get down into the little details a little faster than I might normally. I'm going back and adding a little more color up in here. So the darker values, we need those in order to make the lighter parts of our paintings really stand out as light areas. So as they say, you can't have the light without the dark. So um, I need to at some point get in some darker values in order to see if my lighter values are light enough or if I need to lift or if I need to darken the area around them. Just going back and 
making sure this left edge on these feathers is standing out because it's the darker edge or left edge. Oh my gosh, the right side. <laughs> And I did go back and picked up a little bit of Indian Throne with my Quinn Burnt Scarlet. So this is a little stronger now, which I like. Okay. And I don't think I have my feather um, number on the wing here. I don't know that I have enough lines, but um, just having some to give you the idea that there's overlapping feather that feathers there will um, sometimes be all you need. You don't necessarily have to show every feather. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the ultramarine um, turquoise and some Quinn gold for that kind of olivey green that I'm seeing in some of these. And I'm making the kind of scallop shape. And some of it um, has, will have little lines. If you were to look very closely at the painting, you might see uh, little lines over those. Um, I am going to pause over here and I think I'm going to go back. I do know that I want this edge right here to be a little darker. It's um, not quite dark enough on this shoulder. And so I'm picking up the Indian Throne, my, I think that's Quinn Magenta, it might be Quinn Lilac, and a little bit of the Ultramarine Turquoise, maybe a touch more of the red so that I have a dark mix and I'm going to place it on this side and then I'll use some water to let it fade to the right. So I just cleaned my brush a little and then I'm just taking my brush along some of that edge that I just put on or that paint and softening it a little bit out to the right. All right, and then I think I'm going to use some of that similar mix to come in under some of these feathers that are in the shadow area. And I will use that to help find some of their shapes. Because hummingbirds have really nice overlapping feathers. They get this darker value under the feather that gives the look of that um, kind of scalloped feel to it. All right, so I'm liking that better. I definitely needed that in the shadow. I probably could use a touch of that shadow maybe a little more up in here okay that's better and feathers Right here, I need to go a little darker. There's a touch of a darker, a little darker value right here on this edge, and that's going to help it feel like this part of the shoulder is a little more lit. Okay. 
And so I think I'm going to come down in here. Um, maybe I'll go here first. And Quin Gold and some of the Ultramarine Turquoise. And actually, I'm seeing a kind of a muted brown in places too. So I will be coming back over parts of this. And I do have some marks on my paper for my drawing, but I don't necessarily feel like I have to follow them exactly. So when I'm doing my paintings, whether it's this or something else, um, there are times as I look at the image while I'm working that uh, I may see something I didn't see originally when I do, did my drawing. So even though I do have marks on the paper. I'm not necessarily following, following them exactly. Okay. Did leave some highlight there earlier. And that'll just make some of this layer feel a little brighter. Where it's a little lighter. Okay, so I got a first layer on there, and then I can come back later with a little bit of more of a darker value and a muted color on some of those. Um, I think I'm going to go back up into the really vibrant ultramarine turquoisey feathers in here. Now there is actually, it's probably right about here, a very highlighted um, brighter area where the feathers are catching the light, and so before I paint in there, I need, where did I put it? I need my, there it is, my scrubber brush. And I've gotten it wet. I'm going to just lift, well, I got it wet and then I took off too much water. So usually when I'm using this brush, I will wet it Sometimes I will flick it on my palette, so I just do it without even thinking about it now. And uh, then sometimes I will even dab it on my cloth just a little bit to take just a touch of that water off of it. I want it wet, but I don't want it dripping wet. Okay, so I've lifted that touch and I think this is actually not bad right here. Maybe a little right in here. Okay. And um, I did start this area in the demo with a little bit of a that muted brownish color with the Quinbert Scarlet and my Ended Throne, but it does have some of the Ultramarine Turquoise that's kind of running through here as well. So I left some openings for parts of this area so that I could have some of that Quinbert Scarlet look more vibrant because it's on the white paper and let's see if I can get that in right now while I'm waiting for other parts to dry. Now if I were doing this and I wanted every feather to be very defined and exact I might actually come in with a a small brush when I would get down to that area and do um, those feathers with just little little bitty brush strokes and have it be a little more defined. Sometimes for me that is more information than I want to put in though. 
Sometimes I just want it to be a little less exact. I figure if you have enough information there, you don't necessarily need to put in every mark. Okay, I am going to warm this up though. In between the ultramarine turquoise, it feels a little warmer brown. So this is a uh, quinceana. Clean this up just a touch. Went a little too high with that. And this should be dry enough now. Uh, I think I'll use, I'm going to try the Quinceana with some of the green gold. So it mutes the Quinceana. And when I'm doing this, going over the earlier layer, sometimes I'm letting some of that earlier layer peek through in places. So it's not necessarily that I'm covering that earlier layer completely. And if you were to zoom in on a hummingbird, the feathers, you would see all the, the little pieces and parts. Aha, uh -huh, and I just saw something. This green edge right here, it's a little too strong. So I'm going to soften parts of it. So I'm using my uh, less stiff flat brush. These are um, Royal brand or Royal Lang Nickel uh, brushes and I just get them at my craft store actually, but you can buy them online. And I want this edge to kind of fade together a little more. It's a little too defined. And as I worked with the image more, I just saw that. So sometimes it's a, you see it from the very beginning and you know exactly where things are. And sometimes as you're working with your image, you see things a little more clearly or maybe less clearly, depending on the image. Okay, so soften that. And now those two sections can merge together just a touch more as I'm painting them. Okay. So right up here on this feather that I said was more highlighted, I'm going to yeah, I think I'll try this brush. I was going to say I'm going to switch brushes, but I'm going to come in with my ultramarine turquoise just straight and lift, or not lift, place some color on there and uh, make some of these uh, highlights and darker value areas by leaving some of the openings. In there and then I can just come in and define some of this as well so I want some of this to be a touch darker let's see if I can so I went back to the ultramarine turquoise and I'm darkening the lower edge of some of those so that it feels like it's a touch lighter at the top and that it's darker as it comes down or around the bottom of the feather.
Now because my feathers are not exactly like the back of that bird, I'm sort of creating the same look, but I'm not, as I said earlier, not worried about making it exactly every feather that I'm seeing. This um, little white area that I left earlier, I'm going to actually soften that out so I don't want it to be a hard edged shape right there. So just taking some water and blurring those edges. Just finished what I was thinking. Using water to blur the edges. Okay. And then I think I'll go over here since I just wet that area. The first layer on this needs to go a little darker. So um, my first kind of tannish brown is not quite uh, dark enough. And so I'm going to use the Quinbert Scarlet and a touch of the green gold and come back in. I don't necessarily want it to be too rusty color because it's not necessarily that rusty. So I went back and got a little more green gold on my brush. And I'm going to have some of that mix go across into this area. So this again is, now that I kind of know where I'm placing things and what I'm doing with the different sections because of that first layer or two, now I can come back in and add more color, just start to build it. And this feather right here, while it is does have a little bit of a lighter edge, it will need to go, uh, a lot of it will go darker. I actually need to um, put a little bit of this green gold right here. I'm kind of liking that. Okay, and then on this left side of that feather, right in there, I need to um, lift a highlight. So right here, this is more lit. So I'm just going to lift color back. Uh, scrubbing your paper can be some, um, a, can be hard on it. So I would just be careful with the tools you're using. And I'm also seeing some highlights on parts of these. So I'm going in and lifting and then just test your paper to see if it can handle scrubbing. Because sometimes they don't, not all papers are made the same. Um, and then my highlighted edges that are there, I will probably come in with a brush later. Let me lift part of this back. Um, and go back up to these guys. I said I was gonna lift little in here, but I will probably go in with a brush and some water and just blur those edges just a touch because they're uh, very hard edged and very strong right now. Maybe just a touch on some of these. Okay. And I think I'm going to dry that. All right, so I've dried that, and now I can come back in with the ultramarine turquoise, or I can go back into this area. Um, I think I'll start with the ultramarine turquoise. And just pick out a little more.
I need to clean off some of the color I have in there so I make sure I'm using vibrant ultramarine turquoise and not a mix. Okay. Now there is on this feather, the center of the feather looks like it's ultramarine turquoise and then it's kind of a mix of colors that are kind of fluorescent on either side. some Greenberg Scarlet and the Inden Throne and I think I want a little bit of my olivey green with that mix so this is four pigments but it gives me a nice muted kind of brownish green. So this is uh, green gold with, or no it's not, it's quen gold with uh, the ultramarine turquoise and then I've got uh, the uh, Quinn Burnt Scarlet and Inden Throne mix. So those four colors. This right side is going to need to be in shadow so it will go darker. Okay, so on that right side, I'm going to use Quinbert Scarlet and my Inden Throne mix. And I'll go ahead and get that in. And I didn't wait r really long to come along this side after I'd done those other parts, but. Uh, in general, they're drying pretty fast because they're it's on dry paper and I wasn't using a lot of water in the mix. Okay, so I've got that on there. And then I do want to add a little bit of the ultramarine turquoise, but I'm going to dry it right quick. Okay, so I put that in, and as I was putting it in, um, I felt like I wanted to cool it down a little bit on this right side. So I put some water kind of in the center there, and then I'm just coming in on this um, far right, and I'm placing a little bit of the ultramarine turquoise over parts of this. And I'm liking how that's working, so, okay. All right, uh, so under this feather right here, and possibly others, but that's the one I'm mostly seeing right now, 
I'm going to use the uh, Quinbert Scarlet Ultramarine, uh, I mean, uh, the, oh my gosh, Quinbert Scarlet and Inden Throne, and then I'll come pick up some of my warm green mix. And so this feather area right here has a darker shape right in there, and then there's some darker color. over here as well, right next to this edge. And so I'm just trying to find a little bit of the shadow still in some of those areas. I have not put the shadow in over here yet, so I could go do that right now. Um, Indian Throne, get some of that out, and then I'll use the Quinburnt Scarlet. Whoops, that's a lot of paint. And about in here, it's not very wide, and then it gets wide, the shadow does, right here. And then it goes narrower as it comes around parts of these feathers. Okay, that shadow really starts to help give um, some depth to the back of the bird and also helps with the light. So it makes it feel like the bird is in bright light. So I really like having that in there now. And I may actually go over here and darken this shadow because it's even darker than what I have. One thing to be careful of though is your photos can often make the shadows feel uh, darker than they actually are. So um, even if my photo is, sh is looking like a black shape, I don't necessarily um, and most of the time I don't make my photos, or my photos, my shadows as dark as they are on the photo. And then it does come under, but I have to finish this feather first. And I do think I want to darken just a touch more right in there. Um, and then also, if you saw uh, this shadow area here um, prior, uh, as part of the demo or just when I started the video. Uh, it was uh, didn't have a lot happening in it, but by going in and putting some slightly darker values under some of these feathers, it um, makes that shadow more interesting. So I'll zoom in so you can see that. So when you can see the shape or the shadow area and see it closer, now you can see some of those slightly darker shadows that I have in there that are under the feathers. And so when you have a shadow on top of something, if, uh, it's, if that something has texture or pattern or whatever, coming in after you've placed the shadow in there and uh, adding some of that texture and possibly darker areas to uh, the shadow, it can make it feel more realistic. Like right here, I see a little bit of a shadow right there and I wanna lighten it as it comes out into the sunlight. I don't want it as dark as it might be over here. Um, so I think that's pretty good there. I do want just a touch more texture in a couple places here though, right along that edge. Okay. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out or I'll move the camera. <laughs> I always think that sounds so silly to zoom back out because you zoom in. I will move it back out. All right. So the bird is starting to have feathers that are feeling more like hummingbird feathers. There's some texture 
and some highlights. It's looking shiny and lifting some of those highlights in here is really important to make it feel shiny. Um, so now I'm going to go work over here on this side and uh, on this shoulder area where I was uh, before this um, side, this right side is very dark, which I definitely want that on there. And uh, but it kind of has a softer edge as it moves up. It's got some darker uh, marks, but it's not uh, completely hard edged. I'm going to get out the ultramarine turquoise. I've got some quingle, but I think I'll get a little more. And I will probably be using some of my Quinbert Scarlet and Indian Throne mix with this. So I'll go ahead and make some of that. So I'll have it sitting there. Clean my brush, and then I'm going to go make my um, olive green with the Quin Gold and my Ultramarine Turquoise and just a touch, so I didn't mix it completely in. It's on the tip of the brush though. So this is going to be darker shape right there. I'm going to go pick up some more of the ultramarine turquoise so it's a little greener. And then right along this edge, there's some highlights. Well, I'm going to pause right in there. And then I'm going to take my brush with a touch of water on it and just a few of these upper edges just kind of pull at them a little bit so that they're um, softer in places. Using a little bit of that olive green that I made with the ultramarine turquoise and quin gold coming in there and then I did add a touch of burnt scarlet to it so it'll mute it just a little bit. So now that I'm coming in and focusing on this area I'm kind of figuring out how I want to what colors I want to use over in here and how I want it to um, work together with the other side. And there's a darker shape right there. This is a little cooler, but I don't, so I don't want it as light as I had it, but I don't want it to go too dark either because it's pretty lit right there. A little bit of ultramarine turquoise, the edge, and there. And then as I come to this left side of that shape, it gets a little, um, a little brighter brown, a rustier color. A touch of that right there. And this um, piece that I'm doing right here is his wing. There's a little bit of a highlighted Slightly greenish, slightly greenish shape right in here. And then some little tiny highlighted pieces on that edge. Um, and we may need more Indian thrown out. Yes. So mixing the Indian thrown and Quinmert Scarlet for sort of a purpley color right here. Although it is more highlighted than what I've just made it, but I'm wondering if what I put in will dry the correct value. So sometimes I'll place the color in and then sometimes I do have to come back over it and sometimes it's just right. So I may have to lift or I can possibly leave it. And now I'm just coming in with a darker value right here, just trying to figure out my edge right in through there. It's 
got a little bit of an angle to it. And then, like I said, there's little highlights right there, so I'll leave those. And then because I'm not ready to put in the dark shape yet, I'm just going to take some water and I could leave it because it's probably going to go dark enough that it won't matter. But I'm just going to use some water around that edge so that it can just soften out for now. Um, on this left side, there are some warm, um, where the light's catching it on this side. And I think I want my Quinn uh, Sienna for that. And again, actually what I will do this time instead of coming around each of them, I'll just put some water in the center and dry my brush just a little bit. I do actually need to come over farther with this. It's not near enough to the edge on the left. So I'm putting in some of that glow that I'm seeing and some of it will go away because I'll be putting some dark colors in here and I won't need necessarily all of this, but it's okay to have some of it underneath some of the darker value that will be there eventually. And I'll just fade that back. I actually need to come in, dry my brush just a touch. I need to come back in here, make this a little narrower. There's, I have a highlighted edge that I'm looking at, and that's what I'm trying to get to um, be a little narrower. So for now, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to dry that and then I can come in with my darker value. Getting out the Quinn Sienna and on this edge that I said looked a little warmer, and I used the Quinn Burnt Scarlet at first, I wanted to warm it up even more, and so I put in a little bit of the Quinn Sienna there. And then I can just fade it to the right with some water. And for the wing, I will have this brush sitting there in case I need it, but I'm going to uh, pick up my bigger brush, my number 12, And then I'm going to get out lots of Indian Throne. I have a good amount of uh, the Quinburnt Scarlet sitting there, so I don't need any of that. And basically I'm making a kind of a muted dark, um, either dark purple or dark brownish purple. If that made any sense, I do not know. Okay, I am coming back around parts of this. And my brush is way too dry. Get it a little wetter. There we go. I want it wet enough that I'm not making dry brush marks on my paper. And then on the right side of this wing, kind of right in here, I'm going to take just a touch of that Quinn Burnt Scarlet before I get over there and place that in there because it looks a little warmer and slightly lighter right there. So I liked that and I wanted to have that little bit of difference on that edge. And then I will have to come in with some water to blur 
the warm Quincy in a left side edge. A little bit. So I'm just going to leave those as hard edges for now. And I just want to make sure that the far right edge is nice and dark so that it separates from the background. So that left edge right now looks really wrong because it's so hard edged. But it's a good start because I can use water to pour it. Okay. Come down into here. All right. And then I actually may pull, put a little bit of quinceana on my brush too not just clear water. So I've got Quinciana and I'm going to go back up. I don't want my brush too wet. So I need to make sure that um, it's damp but it's not going to cause a bloom. And then I'm just going over those lines and the color I just put on, it's still damp enough that it's pulling some of that color into uh, the area around it, softening the edges a little. I need more Quinciana. And a touch down in here. and then I'm going to leave it. Um, this side right here is just a touch light. Even though it has that um, lighter shape that I wanted on there, I am going to come back and add a little more color and actually come up into this green section just a touch. And then I think I'm going to put on that right side, a little more of the Quinn Burnt Scarlet, just to still have that color change, but I want that side to be darker because it's definitely out of the light. Okay, so then this edge, this highlighted edge right here is close, but it doesn't quite follow the edge of my scallop of the wing. And so I need to adjust the shadow side on that far left. So I'm picking up my um, shadow mix and then I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit so that it looks like it's following the edge of the wing and it'll make more sense. Thin it out just a little bit Okay, much better. And I'm going to lift this back just a little. Now I don't have the same highlight over here that I'm seeing in the image. Um, for now, I'm not going to worry about it, but I may come back later and see if I can lift just a little bit right there. Some of those minor lights or minor touches here and there that you see on an image um, can make it feel more realistic. Uh, one of the areas that I do want to lift though is right here where I had that brighter warm brown because I want that upper 
left part of it. Let me get a cleaner cloth here. Um, I want that to feel more lit than it was. All right, uh, I'm going to dry this and then I'll come back and I can start working on the bigger feathers at the bottom and the tail feather. So I'm going to go down into this feather and I'll start with a little bit of rusty color in a few places. I don't want it too dark yet. So just picking some of the areas that I see some of that. And possibly a little bit right in here. Maybe a little of the green gold in here. And a little ultramarine turquoise, though this will go darker. And then I'm going to do my lines as I'm coming down because I'm seeing more of those on these back feathers. My brush is pretty dry right now. That's why I'm getting some skipping on the paper. Which it actually just kind of looks like a highlight. And a little more green over in here on this edge. And then I'm going to go back to this lower section and I'm using the Quinn Burnt Scarlet to darken around parts of that. And then I'll just see if I can kind of swipe with my brush to blur some of that together just a little. Okay, and now I need to go in and put the darker values on there. Um, and that darker value is that Quinn Burnt Scarlet Indian Throne and then some of my kind of olivey green. And I need to dry that first. And then near the center part of that feather, I'm going to bring down a darker value with this color mix. And it's also going to be shadowed right here. And just a little bit of a shadow over here, right around that center. Now, I did bring the shadow um, around it and made it uh, a little highlighted in the center because that's going to make that center shaft of the feather feel like it's standing up and a little uh, lighter in the area around it. And then I need to darken. Try not to go over the center. Some of this.
trying to darken some of these guys because they're a little darker on that side. And then I see just a touch more of a warm on there. Okay, and I need to darken that center shaft because it's too bright. So ultramarine turquoise, and I'm just going to come down the center and take out a little more color or a little more um, highlight. And this edge right here on this feather, I didn't catch the edge completely, so there was some highlights right there. All right, so I'm going to pause and I'll be back in a little bit. So the hummingbird is starting to feel much more realistic than when I started. And sometimes it just takes working through what you're working on. Okay, I've got a little of that dark for the beak. I want to darken that lower edge mostly, but a little um, moving up in there is fine. All right, and I'm going to come down here to this bottom. Move my photo and I couldn't figure out what I did with it. Okay, so the bottom feather down here, actually the shadow on this needs to go darker, so I'll do that right quick. Okay, that's good for there. And there is a highlight on this feather, on the tail feather right here. And so I'm placing some water on the paper where the highlight will be. And then I'll let that sit for just a few seconds while I get out some paint. And on the right side, it kind of comes from this edge and it does skip over the paper a little bit. So the light has caught this feather and it's not uh, solid lines in through here. They're kind of broken up just a touch. And same thing. So my brush is a little drier and I need to go get a little bit of green gold on it as well. And then somewhere right in here or so, it starts to fill in. And I think I'm going to take my brush while this paint is slightly damp and kind of just wake up this edge near the white and lift or blur it together just a little bit. And then somewhere in a sort of muted green Kind of blurs actually in here as well. So I don't know if he moved his tail just a touch when I was taking the photo, or it could be that um, it's far enough away from where I was focused on the eye and the head that it's a little blurrier. So it kind of adds to the depth of the scene because. It's not quite as in focus as the upper part of the bird. And that's darker right up in there. 
Okay. A little greener right here. So again, for some of this, as I work through the process, sometimes it's figuring out what I'm doing as I'm going. Um, in this instance, I figured if my painting for the demo didn't quite work, or if it was okay, but you know, maybe I wasn't totally happy with it, that it would be my color study. So whenever I'm working on a painting, um, if it's a demo or maybe I haven't painted this particular subject before, or maybe some part of it I haven't painted before, if something's not working and maybe I'm still figuring it out, even if I've done a color study sometimes, um, you don't always figure out what you're doing maybe until you've done it or until you've gotten far enough in and then uh, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I could have done it that way or maybe next time I'll do this or use this color. And so for me, if I'm working on a painting, if it's not quite doing what I want, then I just say, well, that's my color study. <laughs> and then I give myself permission to play and try things. And I'm actually much happier with this than I was uh, when I uh, finished the demo, partly because um, it was it was okay. I was getting there, but it wasn't quite what I had had in my head. And um, so just continuing to work on it, I think that's one of the biggest things with a painting, a watercolor, um, whatever medium you're using, is that sometimes there are points at which maybe you're not too happy with something, but continuing to work on it, try things, um, and then just know that maybe not all of them work out, and it's okay, and you can go back and try it again. And you've learned something from that first initial trial color study, or maybe it was meant to be your painting, and that um, doing it again affords you the opportunity to uh, make adjustments and you've learned something in that first painting. So it never hurts to go back and try again. Okay, and part of it for me was, as I mentioned in the demo, this is the first time I've painted a black-chinned hummingbird. And so colors are slightly different than what I've used for other hummingbirds. This um, right side of this feather is, but it has a lot of the ultramarine turquoise in it as the lighter value. So I'm just going to paint that over this whole area, and I'm watching that edge of my wing. Okay. All right, so I'll leave that, because that has to dry before I can put the darker value in there. It still has those lines that are darker coming in through here. So I'll come back in a little bit for that. Um, I can't, I guess I could put the darkest. There's uh, this lighter value, which is in shadow. So it'll need some shadow, but then right next to it on this far right is a darker value. And it's not touching the wing that I was just working on. So right here, there is a darker value. So I'll go ahead and put that edge in and that helps separate um, this tail feather from the flower that's behind it. Although the flower does have a shadow on it as well.
And then on this far left, there's a little bit of color in here next to that edge. And I'm just going to fade that. And I actually think I want to soften the bottom edge of the tail. Um, it's a little too uh, hard edged down here. And because it's farther from the face, I'm okay if it's a little softer. Plus, I don't like how pointed this is. I want this to be just a touch rounder. Sometimes that's one of the things that I don't like about masking with masking tape is that some of those slightly rounder edges, sometimes I don't cut them quite right and I get a little too squared off with the points. Um, so that's better. So I can leave that. And you can see it wasn't too bad to just come in and soften it. I will go back up into those uh, little tiny white areas on the wing. Find the brush. Okay, so I'm going to just try taking water and the paint next to those highlights and see if just running my brush over that highlighted edge, definitely at the end of the line and maybe a little in the middle of all of them. If that will be enough. Oh, I think I see a piece of, uh, maybe not. I was gonna say, I think I see a piece of tape here, but I think it's just where I left a highlight. Okay, so we're good. And this does have a little bit of a lighter value at that tip, so I'll use my other brush, easier to lift with. So those highlights on that far left are not quite as strong. If you still feel like they're standing out a little too much, you might try a flat brush to adjust those kinds of things. Okay, and I'll dry this bottom edge and then I can work on the tail feather again. little bit of a dark shape up by the neck right here where there's some a little bit of a longer feather and it's slightly in shadow so I want to go ahead and put that in And uh, down here in my white, I'm going to try my eraser because I have to clean it just a touch. Um, I have some pencil line in that white area and one of the lines, most of the time they don't bother me a whole lot if I see some, but one of the lines is sticking up and it looks like a hair or feather, <clears throat> excuse me, a part of the feather that's pointed the wrong way. It looked off. Okay, so that's better. And then um, I'm going to take a tiny bit of Indian Throne and see if I want a touch of that on this, mostly on the right side of that upper area. 
and then a little bit of it down in here. So it's darkening my first layer. I'm giving a little more depth to that area. Okay, so this, this side, I do want to go back and I need to um, darken that first layer again. It's not quite dark enough. And I think this time I might put a little Indian Throne with my Ultra Turquoise. And just come back over it. So this will be the lighter layer. Because it's in shadow, it's darker than what I had. Okay, and then I'll dry it. Make sure it's ready for the darkest value. All right, so I uh, dried that, and I think I'm gonna see if Try to get a smaller brush. What was I using? Okay, so I was using my eight. I think I'm going to try my six because I feel like my really small brushes, my uh, this is my two, um, doesn't hold as much water in paint, and sometimes it skips more than um, the surface, or it doesn't have enough paint on there. So I'm going to just go to my six and. Uh, a little bit of Clean Burnt Scarlet, which if my paint is very damp still because I replenished it today and getting too much out. All right, so I have the Indian Throne Clean Burnt Scarlet, and I think I'll put just a little bit of my Ultramarine Turquoise with it. And I need to move my mic for a few seconds. Okay, so I have lines in there, and now I want to just kind of run my brush over that area. It will blur some of that together and make them uh, be just a touch more muted than what I had. Just a touch more color on this edge. There's a shadow right here. And the center of this feather has a touch of color on it, but it's not really strong. So I think I'll just take a little bit of my olive green and just touch it in a couple places. And then it does have a shadow on either side. It also has a little bit of rusty color on it. I don't want it to be too um, just white sitting there. So I'll dry this. All 
right? And then the Quinburn Scarlet and Ultramarine, or I mean, Quinburn Scarlet and Inden Throne will be my shadow. And so I'm going to just bring that on this right side and a little under this feather. Kind of a little more Inden Throne in the mix. Touch on this side. And then I do see, if I can adjust this just a touch. I see a little color on this lower right side. Some maybe because of the wing. And then it just may be a shadow because the feathers turned away from the light right there. All right, and then on the uh, white part of this feather, I'm going to use my cobalt and the cobalt and quin lilac and then a touch of the quin burnt scarlet in the mix and that shadow is right in through here comes around there's a little bit here and there's a little bit of a white shape right there on this edge right there. So I'll leave that. And then this part of the wing, that highlight, is in shadow in parts of it. So I'm going to place a little, a little shadow in this lower piece for sure. And maybe just a touch here and there. So it's not all too stark white. Um, for this tail feather later, because this background is pretty close in value, I may decide to darken um, part of this area right here. But um, I may decide once I have more of the flowers in and everything that I'm okay if the tail doesn't separate from the background a whole lot right there. Um, so I think I'm going to leave everything else that I see or that, you know, I don't see it a lot that needs to be adjusted. And uh, I will come back later and do the flowers depending on how long this video is. I may separate it into two pieces. So I'll go ahead and zoom out so you can see where it's at right now. And if you don't see this um, completed at the end of this, then I've decided to uh, break the video up into two pieces. And so the second half, which is probably what's going to happen, the second half is probably going to be uh, painting the, the leaves and the stem of the flower. If I can pause, get my camera to stop bouncing. All right, so I hope that was interesting to see kind of the uh, first few layers of the hummingbird and then uh, the successive layers to bring it uh, to completion um, or close to completion. I can't ever necessarily say that I'm done with it until I get um, the flowers in and have everything uh, more buttoned up. And uh, sometimes I need to step back and look at uh, the painting as a whole to see if my values and uh, the color and all of that is working. So even though right now I'm very happy with the hummingbird, I may be making some adjustments later, but for now, uh, I will leave it there and I uh, hope that was interesting and if I, if you see more video after this, you'll know I decided to keep it all as one video, but uh, I'll see you next time if not. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Bye.